Good day to everyone. This day, we're going to talk on intellectual property rights and cyber crime. So, there are a lot more to learn in this lesson. To start with, let us identify the different learning objectives that each of you must be able to attain by the end of this lesson. You should be able to describe the different types of intellectual property rights. You should be able to gain an understanding of the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Gain an understanding of the concept on cybercrime. Describe the different categories of cybercrime. Cite examples of cybercrime. And develop awareness on the salient features of Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Make sure you have with you these materials and equipment, especially a notebook and a ball pen, to take the notes as we go along. Now, what are some instances where cybercrime must have been committed? Can you cite some of them? Are you aware of any laws implemented in the Philippines in relation to the cybercrime committed? Can you identify some of these laws in preventing cybercrime in the Philippines? Okay, so this time we are now going to start our discussion proper on this lesson on intellectual property rights and cybercrime. Now, there are actually three main categories or there are three main types of intellectual property which are subjected to legal protections and this includes the copyright, trademarks, and patents. The legal protection is, is against infringement, which is the invasion of the rights secured by copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So, what do we mean when we say intellectual property? When we say intellectual property, these are intangible assets which consist of human knowledge and ideas. Examples of which includes a software. Again, basically when we say intellectual property, these are intangible assets. So we cannot physically touch these objects which consist of our of human knowledge and ideas. And again, examples include software, data, novels, sound recordings, the design of a new mousetrap, algorithms, or cure of a disease. So these are some examples of intangible assets, which are protected under intellectual property rights, or what we call IPR. So the first IPR that we're going to talk this day is on copyright. So what is a copyright? Now, when you say copyright law, it protects the tangible or fixed expression of an idea, but not the idea itself. So what does it mean? A copyrighted material, so it protects the expression of the idea, but not the idea itself. So what does it mean? mean so basically copyright are protect are is a protection to uh, to the expression of idea like you have your idea and then you put idea into writings so your output or your writings now is protected on copyright but not your idea so once you express your idea into some tangible form it is now protected on copyright it is, and take note that a copyright is automatically assigned when it is created. So then the moment you start writing your idea, it is now copyrighted on you. And then the copyright owner has the following exclusive rights. Protection against infringement, reproduction right, modification right, distribution right, public performance right, and public display rights. So these are the different uh, rights that a copyright owner can gain from a copyrighted material. So he has the right to modify his work, to reproduce, to have public performance, and public display. And then again, if it is not your work, then you are not allowed to use that. 
unless you cite them as your reference. Again, when we say copyright, these are protection to an expression of idea. And it covers things like literary works, those stories written by authors, they are protected by copyright. Musical works, those uh, songs played over Spotify and other music streaming apps, they are protected with copyright. Dramatic works, those performed on stage, you, can, you cannot just record a video while they are performed on stage because these are expressions of idea and these are protected with copyright. Pantomime and choreographic works, they are still protected with copyright because they are expression of idea. This, are, this is an art and, is, and it is an expression of idea, therefore it is copyrighted with, it is copyrighted. Pictures, those pictures that we take are copyrighted, whether it is not explicitly defined, but then knowing that it is an expression of idea that is copyrighted. Graphic and sculptural works, those arts displayed, sculptures, these are copyrighted. The movies that we have that we watch from our mobile phones or from our computer, from our TV, these are also copyrighted. Sound and even sound recordings, podcasts, these are copyrighted materials. Architectural works, their design of a building, these are copyrighted. And we also have the software related works, the different programs which are now exploited with pirated software nowadays. So that is that is what we call copyright. It is a, it is the protection of an expression of idea, but not idea itself. The idea must be put into something tangible and then the copyright is not applied to that uh, object or to that, uh, for example, writing or the put, the put into something or the express idea. The moment the idea is now expressed, it is now protected with copyright. What about patent? When you say patent, it is for invention. It is a grant of a property right to the inventor. So, what can you gain when you have a patent? Okay, so these are the rights obtained by, um, by a patent owner. It excludes others from making, using, offering for sale, or selling the invention. So that means that you can, you can no longer create the same invention that you have created because it is already patented. And thus, they are not allowed to sell this invention because it is not their work. They don't own the patent. You cannot offer it for sale. And again, it excludes others from you from making the same invention because your invention is already patented and there are three types of patent you have your utility patents which uh, which may be granted to anyone who invents or discovers any new and useful processes machine article of, of manufacture composition of matter or any new and useful improvement thereof. Then we have also design patents. These are granted to anyone who invents a new, original, and ornamental design for an article of manufacture. Then we also have a plant patent. So those anyone who invents or discovers, sexually reproduces any distinct and a new variety of plant. These are patents. Again, when we say patent, these are protection for invention, which excludes others from making, selling, and distributing such invention because it is a grant to the inventor of a product. Whereas, again, when we say copyright, it is the protection on the expression of an idea. Then, another important uh, intellectual property right is about trademark. So what are trademarks? It is actually a word, a name, a symbol or device that is used in trade with goods 
to indicate the source of goods and to distinguish them from the goods of others. So in other words, it is used to create an identity for a specific product or company, which makes this product or company different from the others. Or in other words, a trademark is used to give a competitive advantage over other competitors. It gives you your identity, perhaps your logo. Your logo is classified as a trademark. It is protected with trademark. And thus, it should, be, it should not be used by any other competitor selling the same product because it is with a trademark. Another example is like, the chemical formula used in creating these soft drinks like we have different tastes for coca-cola different tastes for pepsi it is because they have their own chemical formula of their soft of their soft drinks and that and that the chemical formula is also protected with a trademark because not everyone can create the same product it gives the taste of a cola is different from the taste of Pepsi because they have their own trademark. The chemical formula used in creating their products are protected with trademarks. And thus, if you work for one company and then you expose that formula, then you are held liable for trademark because it is protected un under intellectual property rights. Then another important concept on trademark is that we also have a service mark now a service mark is similar to a trademark except that it identifies and distinguishes the source of a service rather than a product so it is more of how a service differs from the others that's what we call what gives your service different from the others or what is the identity of your service that's what we call service mark a trademark is an identity of a product or a company. Where a service mark is an it gives identity to a service offered by a specific company. Logo, company logo are protected under trademark for the intellectual property rights. And thus, we cannot copy the same logo from our competitors because they are protected with trademarks. Now, there are some important issues on intellectual property and computer security. So these are the uh, most commonly exploited resources, like for example, software. So this includes programs produced by vendors of commercial software, like Microsoft. They are one of the giants when it comes to uh, software because they are the ones producing Windows operating systems. It includes operating systems, application software, utility, uh, utility programs, as well as shareware, proprietary software created by organization for internal use and software produced by individuals. And then for all such software, the copyright protection is available if desired. So there is a copyright protection for the software created by a specific company. So they have to apply for a copyright so that they will have they can obtain those cap, uh, rights granted upon the copyright owner, like the sale, the production, the alteration, the modification of your product. It is your copyright protection. Then in some cases, you can also apply for patent. Then another important uh, resources when it comes to computer security is about databases. Now, have you ever heard that there was an issue on leak of databases? Now, basically, a database consists of data that is collected and organized in such a fashion that it has a potential commercial value. So, our database contains data which may have a potential commercial value. Like, for example, it's an economic forecasting database. So this database is used to forecast about the economic status of a company. So it has a commercial value. So it is it can be protected with copyright. But nowadays we have the the so-called in the Philippines we have implemented the Data Privacy Act, which which 
specifically designed for data protection. Okay, so that's what we call Data Privacy Act. But then again, there are some cases where the data has been exposed and they are held liable for this Data Pri uh, Privacy Act. Then another important um, resources when it comes to computer security is of digital content. Why is it a concern? It is because since they are digital content, they can easily be copied by anyone else. Like for example, MP3, movies, recordings, ebooks, these are digital content and they can be they are prone for copying and sharing without license. And it includes your digital content includes your audio files, video files, multimedia, your courseware, website contents, and any other digital work that can be presented in some fashion using computers or digital devices. So that's what we call your digital content. Then algorithms. So what are algorithms? So algorithms are actually the uh, these are logical procedure in performing a specific task. So there's a step-by-step -step procedure on how to perform a specific action. So it can be are protected with, it can be applied for a patent. An example of a, patent, of a patentable algorithm, which is previously cited, is the RSA public key crypto system. So uh, what is this all about? So it's about how you secure how you encrypt a data such that they are not readable to anyone. So it's an encryption technology and they are patented. So they, they have their own specific process on how to encrypt and or how to secure data as it is being transmitted over a public network. Okay, that's what they call. Uh, they have their own procedure and it's and is accepted worldwide by anyone. So they are, again, patented. Then another important aspect that we, we should have known when we talk on computer security and cybercrime, when we talk also on intellectual property rights, is the implementation of the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or what we call the DMCA. Have you ever... Uh, experience that when you try to search for things like bird box movie free download then there was a uh, link uh, there was an option at the last part of your search stating that uh, the, the content violates that DMCA, that DMCA and it is not displayed so these are uh, some of the research results when you use Google to, perf uh, to search things like movie for free download. So what is this all about? So your DMCA is actually designed to implement the World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO, treaties which is signed in 1996, wherein it aims to strengthen the protection of copyrighted materials in digital format. So that is why in some of our searches using Google, some of these search results are not being displayed because uh, they violate this DMCA. And thus, their content is not available for everyone to view because it violates the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. At the same time, your DMCA encourages the copyright owners to use technological measures to protect their copyrighted works, which, in, including, which includes measures to prevent access to the work and measures to prevent copying of the work. At the same time, it, prohibit, uh, it prohibits attempts to bypass the measures which have both criminal and civil penalties. And then there are also some actions which are exempted from DMCA, or these are mga actions which are considerable and not a violation of DMCA, for example, fair use. So what is meant by 
fair use. It is a, uh, it is intended to permit others to perform, show, code, copy, and otherwise distribute portions of the work for certain purposes. And these purposes include review, comment, and discussion of the copyrighted works. For example, you want to uh, you want to have a copy of this book because you want to evaluate or you want to review the book for contents. And after reviewing the book, you have to send your feedback to the author with regards to the review of your book, and that is acceptable. When you discuss the contents of a copyrighted work, like you want to talk whether this book is really good or not, you want to review, to discuss it among your groups, among your peers, that is acceptable because that is one example of a fair use on the MCA, fair use on copyrighted works. Another one is what we call your reverse engineering. Now, reverse engineer, engineering is applicable to a software product. So, the reverse engineering of a software product is allowed if the user has the right to use a copy of the program and if the purpose of the reverse engineering is not to duplicate the functionality of the program but rather to achieve interoperability. So what does it mean? So when you say reverse engineering, you try to make use of, uh, of an existing software to check whether the new software developed is compatible with this software, to check for compatibility. Whether these two, for example, your software should be able to communicate with, a, with this existing software. So you, you, you might secure a copy of that program and then for you to evaluate and to check whether the program that you have created can communicate with the program created by this programmer or somehow in some other way that's one way of reverse engineering another way is to create a new software which will not duplicate the existing functionality but rather it adds new functionality to the existing software and that is allowed for reverse engineering you search for codes to make your own software that is reverse engineering then for encryption research good faith is allowed wherein this exception allows decryption attempts to advance development of encryption technology so they are allowed to decrypt data to check, just to make sure uh, how secure is the encryption done by a specific uh, company. Then we also have for security testing. For security test, uh, testing, this is the access of the network for good faith testing, investigating or correcting a security flow or vulnerability with authorization of the owner so basically in security testing you just try to test a specific software for vulnerabilities what are the problems that lies in this software or in this product that's what they call for security testing it could be you could test a network whether there are flaws you could test a network whether it has flaws in this existing network then for personal privacy, it is generally permitted to bypass technological measures that if that is the only reasonable way to prevent the access to the result in the billing or recording of personally identifying information. So those are the, the different uh, concepts and issues with regards to intellectual property rights. We have your copyright, patents, trademarks we also talk on the u.s digital millennium copyright act or the dmca which is implemented worldwide and is accepted worldwide as a way to prevent uh, unauthorized use of copyrighted materials now any violation to <coughs> to copyright of a software product which includes the use of a computer are referred to as cybercrime 
So, what is meant by cybercrime? Cybercrime is also termed as computer crime, which is any criminal activity in which the computers or computer networks are a tool, a target, or it could be a place of criminal activity. Like we can think of actions like online fraud, identity theft, web defacement are examples of cybercrime. Now, we have here three categories of cybercrime. The first category is that computer as a, as a target. So, in this case, the computer is a target of the crime to acquire information stored in that computer, control the system without authorization or payment, alter data integrity, or interfere with the availability of computer or server. It can be an either attack on data integrity, system integrity, data confidentiality, privacy, or availability. So basically, in computer as a, as a target, the target of the crime is the computer. Once the computer has been exploited, the user <coughs> can take control on the computer, make changes on the data stored in the computer, or interfere the services offered by the computer in such a way that authorized users can no longer access these services. It could be attack on, again, data integrity when modifying the data stored in your computer, system integrity when it, uh, when it alters the operation of the computer, data confidentiality when it exposes the data stored in the computer, for privacy or availability. Like, for example, uh, again, those authorized users or legitimate users can no longer use the computer because it is now under attack. Then, the second category on a cybercrime is referred to as computer as a storage devices. Meaning to say, the computer is used to store the data which has been <coughs> which can be classified under cybercrime. Like they are used to store pornographic materials. They are used to store stolen credit card numbers. So that is computer as storage devices. So they are used as a passive storage medium. So for example, you don't know that your computer has already been used as storage medium for these stolen credit cards. Okay, for instance, it can be used to store stolen password list, credit card or calling card numbers, proprietary corporate information, uh, pornographic image files, pirated commercial software. So that is what the second category on cybercrime or computer crime. The computer as storage devices. And then the third category is that the computer as a communication tool. So what does it mean? So in this category, the computers were used to facilitate communication and in most cases they are done online so the computer is used to communicate to perform it's used to communicate in performing a computer crime example of this uh, comp of this category includes illegal sale of prescription drugs because drugs of course they should have prescription before of uh, those drugs which cannot be buy over the counter so it should have it should come with a prescription so illegal sale can be done uh, in the black market then you also have controlled substances alcohol guns fraud gambling and even child pornography because in some cases child pornography is becoming a rampant uh, crime over the inter a cyber crime which, uh, in which computer I use to capture the video of a child and then send to other users live. So the, these are the list of cyber crimes as cited on, as cited from the Convention on Cyber Crime. It includes illegal access of computers. I uh, mean to say these are unauthorized use of a computer without proper legitimate con 
um, credentials. Illegal inter interception, like you intercept the data while they are sent to the server or while the data are traveling or you intercept a telephone call diba? the popular hello Garcia, that is an in uh, that is illegal interception and hence it is captured illegally therefore it can't be used against the accused individual because the, the data itself is obtained illegally therefore it can't be used against an individual then data interference means to say the data while, while the data is being transmitted to the server we capture the data and then make changes like for example uh, sending the data captured from the picos machine they are intercepted and change the result of the election that's a crime then system interference changing the capability of a computer system misuse of devices you also have computer related forgery like you copy a data you modify a data that is computer related forgery computer related fraud uh, deceptions online then we also have offenses related to child pornography and then infringements of copyrights and related rights these are examples of cap, um, cyber crime then also attempt or aiding or abetting so I mean to say you help someone in committing a cyber crime that is also an example of a cyber crime okay so here are the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies like lack of confidence in which a law enforcement agency weak uh, and so on now in the Philippines, we have this uh, so-called Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, or otherwise known as RA10175. So the Republic Act 10175 is otherwise known as Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, was signed last September 12, 2012, wherein it is an act defining cyber crime. Providing for the prevention, investigation, suppression, and the imposition of penalties, therefore, and for other purposes. So here are the salient features of Republic Act. So the salient features of the Act include intentionally, internationally, consistent definitions for certain cyber crimes, and includes the following: cyber squatting, cyber sex, child pornography. Identity theft, illegal access to data or libel, misuse of devices, system interference, and data interference. So all of these things are going to be, we are going to talk this individually. Okay, so we have heard the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. Well, this slide are only an excerpt from the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012 or, or from the RA10175 obtained from the official gazette of the Philippines. We are just going to talk a few of these and more importantly, what are the punishable acts under the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012 because there are a lot of things presented in this Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. But what's more important is that we should be able to know what are these acts punishable against the RA10175. First, of, uh, first is that the offenses against confidentiality, integrity, and availability of computer data systems, which includes 1. Illegal access, that is the access to the whole or any part of a computer system without right. So, I mean to say, you try to use a computer without proper credentials. You bypass the usual security measures of a computer, and that is what they call illegal access. Another one illegal interception then the interception made by technical means without right of any non-public transmission of computer data to from or within a computer system including electromagnetic emissions from a computer system carrying such computer data so you intercept the data while it is being transmitted or for example uh, there were two individuals who are trying to do a video call and then here comes you 
who tried to intercept the data, you eavesdrop what they are talking online. So you use some technical uh, knowledge to intercept the data as it is being sent to the server. Then you also have your data interference. So you capture data while it is being transmitted. More or less the same with um, illegal interception. So in illegal interception, you stop the sending of data. Whereas in legal in data interference, you just capture data. You alter, you modify, you damage, or you delete the data as it is being transmitted. It is intentional or reckless alteration, damaging, deletion, or deterioration of computer data, electronic document, or electronic data message without right, which includes an adduction or transmission of viruses. So that's what we call data interference. Then you also have your system interference. So what is system interference? It is the intentional alteration or reckless hindering or interference with the functioning of a computer or computer network by inputting, transmitting, damaging, deleting, deteriorating, altering, or suppressing computer data or program, electronic document or electronic data message without right or authority, including the production or transmission of viruses. So you alter the, the operation of a computer or a computer network in such a way that legitimate users can no longer use the computer or the computer network because of your data or because of system interference. Then we also have misuse of devices. It is the use, production, sale, procurement, importation, distribution, or otherwise making available without the right of a device including of the program designed for or adopted primarily for the purpose of committing any of the offenses under this act. Computer password, access code, or similar data by which the whole or part of a computer system is capable of being accessed with intent that is to be used for the purpose of committing offenses of this, under this act. And it is also the position of an item referred to in paragraphs A and B or B with intent to use the devices for the purpose of committing any of these offenses under this section. So meant to say, in the misuse of devices, you try to use a device for the purpose of committing a cybercrime. Okay, that's what they call, uh, that's what, uh, that is what is meant by uh, misuse of devices. A device, you, you have, you possess a device which can be used to break security codes for a computer, to break security codes for a network that is all declassified as a cyber crime that is misuse of devices. Then you also have cyber squatting. What is meant by cyber squatting? So basically when you say cyber squatting, it is just creating a new website more or less similar to an exist to a legitimate website for the purpose of getting uh, confidential information like you created a new website for metro bank deceiving users that this is a legitimate website which will encourage users to enter their uh, username and password so that the uh, so that the hacker or so that individual monitoring that a uh, fake website is able to capture your username and password just to log into your bank accounts. So you created a new domain which is very de deceptive to public users in such a way that it has the same look more or less there are only few differences in the domain of a website. For example, the uh, legitimate website uses HTTPS. And then the legitimate website uses only HTTP. So there's only a minute difference. So make sure to thoroughly check on the website you are trying to open whether this is, whether that website is legitimate or not. Otherwise, you, you might be prone for phishing attacks. 
So, cyber squatting is basically the accusation of a domain name over the internet in a bad faith to profit, mislead, destroy reputation, and deprive others from understanding the same if such a domain is similar, identical, or confusingly similar to an existing trademark registered with the appropriate government agency at the time of domain name registration. It could be identical in any way similar with the name of a person other than the registrant in case of a personal name. So, more or less, a uh, deceptive website, deceptive which can, decept, uh, which can lead to deception of public users. It can be acquired with outright or with intellectual property interest in it. Then we also have computer-related forgery. So forgery, it is the alteration or modification of any data stored in a computer without proper authority. So you try to change data from someone else's computer that is now an example of computer-related forgery. For example, you tried to uh, get into the registrar's computer, computer system and then change your grade. That is now an example of computer-related forgery because you try to alter data without proper authority. So when you say computer-related forgery, it is the input alteration or deletion of a computer data without right which will resort the data in an authentic data with the intent that it be considered or acted upon for legal purposes as if it were authentic regardless whether or not the data is directly readable or intelligible or it is also the act of knowingly using a computer data which is a product of a computer related forgery as defined here in for the purpose of perpetuating fraudulent or dishonest design. We also have computer-related fraud. It is also the unauthorized input, alteration, or deletion of computer data or program or interference with the functioning of a computer system, causing the damage thereby a fraudulent intent. So provided that if no damage has been caused, the penalty shall be one degree lower. So you conduct fraud online, that is computer-related fraud, or your fake data is still computer related fraud. Then you also have your computer related identity theft. So identity theft or computer related identity theft it's much like um, impersonating some uh, someone. So it is the intentional acquisition, use, misuse, transfer, position, alteration or deletion of identifying information belonging to another whether natural or juridical, without right. So that is computer-related identity theft. You you impersonate someone, or you try to uh, create a new account, which is a fake account of a registered user. Okay, you try to copy data. You try to copy personal data from others to pose as the individual, that is identity theft. Then we also have there the computer uh, content-related offenses. First, content-related offenses are, firstly, we have your cyber sex. That is the willful engagement, maintenance, control, or operation, directly or indirectly, of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of a computer system for favor or consideration. So, cyber sex. Then we have also your child for, uh, pornography. It is unlawful act defined and punishable by Public Act 9775 or the Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009, which is committed through computer system. And provided that the penalty should be imposed one degree lower, higher, one degree higher than that provided in the Public Act Number 9775. So it is one degree higher since uh, your viewers are not could be uh, worldwide. Then also have your third uh, the content related offenses are the unsolicited commercial 
communications like selling of products uh, you receive an advertisement from your email na unsolicited emails or the so, the so called spam you are also bound for cyber crime but just be careful because in some way or another you were the one who give consent to send advertisements to your email when you sign up for something or for some services just make sure to, be the, to review the terms and conditions as cited in the or as cited upon registration because it may be that they will provide you with updates and it is not subject for cyber crime okay so unsolicited, unsolicited commercial communications this are this is a transmission of a commercial electronic communication with a used computer system which seeks to advertise sell or offer or offer for sale products and services which are prohibited unless the prior affirmative consent from the recipient like for example you give consent that this website should send some advertisements or should send products on you then that is not subject for cyber crime then the primary intent of the communication is for service and or administrative announcements from sender to its existing users subscribers or customers because again in some websites which allows you to sign up for something there are terms and conditions and then if you don't review those, those terms and conditions it could be that they will send you some promotional materials for you to use or if, if you are an existing user they are going to send some updates but then there, there are also options to unsubscribe if you if you would like to unsubscribe from their service and then also the following conditions are present the commercial electronic co communication contains a simple valid and reliable way for recipient to reject to reject reset a further commercial electronic messages like you have the option to unsubscribe and that is also valid then the commercial electronic communication does not purposely disguise the source of electronic message and finally the commercial electronic com communication does not purposely include misleading information in any part of the message in order to induce recipients to read the message then there's also uh, libel libel uh, cyber libel is also part of the cyber crime it is unlawful acts or prohibited acts of libel as defined article 355 of the vice penal code as amended committed through a computer system or any other similar means by which may be devised in the future then other offenses the following acts also constitute an offense like aiding or abetting in the commission of a cyber crime so any person who willfully abets or aids in the commission of any of the offenses as enumerated in this act shall also be held liable so if you encourage someone to do that or you help someone to commit a cyber crime then you are also held liable you support okay that is aiding or abetting this also the attempt when you attempt to commit a cyber crime you are now also held liable even though you did not perform yet but then you are still in the attempt that is you are now also held liable so all crimes defined and penalized by the revised penal code as amended and special laws if committed by through and with the use of information and communication technologies shall be covered in this relevant provisions of this act provided that the penalty being imposed shall be one degree higher than that provided in the by the revised penal code as amended and special laws as the case may be okay so i guess we have covered we have already covered the most essential on the cyber crime prevention act of 2012 so i do hope that you now aware of what are these crimes committed over online over the internet or or the use of computer system and what are its possible um, actions then so i do hope that you take note of them 
and make sure not to violate any of these uh, offenses as enumerated. Otherwise, you will be held liable. So, in this lesson, we learn the different intellectual property rights, the trade copyright, trademark, and then the patent. We also learn the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act. We also learn the different uh, resources which can be easily, uh, which are prone for uh, violation against copyright, like your software, databases, algorithms. We also learn the different acts punishable by RA 10175 or the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Thank you and have a good day.